Mr. Secretary, good to have you with us. If you follow through on this threat and boot President Biden from the ballot, would you be doing so because the Constitution compels you or in pursuit of some political payback? No, if, if I do anything with regard to my official offices, it's because of what the law says. Um, and what I have said in that tweet is that what Maine and Colorado did was terrible. It, I believe, is not following the law and that the Supreme Court needs to come in quickly and stop that from happening. My concern is if the Supreme Court somehow says that, no, that is the law of the land, the Supreme Court okaying uh, individuals being taken off of the ballot without due process, without being convicted of a crime, sometimes just on the whim of not even an elected secretary of state will lead to havoc. And if that is the rule that is the law of the land that the Supreme Court upholds, then you know as well as I do, whether we like the idea or not, that Republicans and Democrats will be held to the same standard. So you raise the standard there, which is interesting because it's true, President Trump has not yet been convicted of a crime, nor was he convicted of the impeachment charges in the Senate. Um, but if a criminal court does convict President Trump of a crime, does that change your answer? Well, what we saw in Maine was an appointed, not even an elected secretary of state, not a judge, not even an attorney, someone who for purely political partisan reasons kicked uh, the opposite party's potential prompt presidential nominee off the ballot. That's what happened. That cannot continue to happen. And if that is allowed by the United States Supreme Court, it's not just going to be one side that acts that way. If the United States Supreme Court says the U.S. Constitution allows secretaries of state to throw political uh, people off the ballot without due process, then it will happen. And that is not good for this country. The due process is certainly a compelling part of this entire ongoing conversation, but, but that's not the reason these secretaries of state gave. They, they cited the Constitution and its 14th Amendment, as you know. that well, It doesn't on... matter what reason they give if they're lying or if they're not giving due process. I could tell you that, you know, I'm going to put the, 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 the Easter Bunny on the ballot because I believe they, that he really exists. Well, that doesn't make it right just because I said it. I don't know if that's a helpful analogy. We can use facts and we can talk about whether or not there was uh, an act of insurrection. Do you believe? Well, President let's talk about the 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. The 14th Amendment specifically excludes the office of president, which is the only office that Donald Trump has ever held. That's an argument that some lawyers have made because it's under. No, no, no. That's not an argument. Let's look at what it says. It says. Um, there's the predicate that says these are the offices or things that you're not allowed to do. Here, I'll read it to you. It's no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States. It's that under part that may not refer to the president or under any state. It's not that section, actually. It's the next section. Uh, as a member, so it goes on to say, who having previously taken an oath yes. as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the U.S. shall have engaged in insurrection right. or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort. Uh, you, if you, you look at that middle section there, President Trump has never been a member of Congress. He's never been a member of any state legislature. He's never been an executive or judicial officer of any state. So the only way that applies to him is if he what, it has been, took an oath as an officer of the United States. Well, right? he had, he, the, the first two words of this whole clause seem to clear it up to me. It's no person shall be. No person. He has been a person. Unless they have done this. Right. You cannot just read part of it. This... Um, well, well, let's throw this whole thing out because it's kind of silly. You, you've already applied this same thing to President Biden. You've already said he's potentially committed an act of insurrection because he's, quote, in your words, let an invasion unstopped into our country from the border. So you're already applying but the same standard to President what Biden. What I have said is that individuals have said that what President Biden has done at the border is rebellion or insurrection. I have made no final determination. I think that what was done in Colorado 
and what was done in Maine was wrong. I do not think secretaries of state should make these decisions. What I said, though, in furtherance was, if the Supreme Court upholds that secretaries of state can and should make these decisions, which we saw in Maine, then it then the same lack of due process, the same lack of following the law will apply equally. Mm -hmm. I swore an oath to the United States Constitution, and I've always said I will follow the law and I will treat both sides under the, or well, all sides, because there's more than two parties, uh, equally. If this is the standard, then you will see secretaries of state apply that standard to people. But you're sort and of arguing any that- any reasonable person should not want these standards applied not only to political candidates, mm -hmm. but if your children were ever uh, being prosecuted, you sure wouldn't want them held to these standards. Well, I'll come back to say, I think the due process argument really does hold up and perhaps we'll see more of that play out uh, in the time to come. But you're sort of making the argument right now that two wrongs make a right. It's like saying, well, no, the other side, the other I'm side uh, is, 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 is let me just right finish the now. question. You're saying it's if the other side, if, if I can the finish Supreme the question, Court says it's the rule of the land. It, it sounds to me like you're saying if the other side rips the Constitution halfway, well, you have no choice. You don't want to do it, but you're going to pick up the Constitution and rip the rest of the page. That would be true if I said I'm doing it right now. What I said was we need the Supreme Court to step in and stop this. Do you agree right now that President Biden has committed an act of insurrection? by lax policy at the border? I believe that under the law, as I understand it right now, that is not a determination for me to make. And I don't want to make that determination, but that is up to the United States Supreme Court to make sure that everyone plays by the same rules. Look, if you're playing basketball, and you're probably a far better basketball player than I am, and the ref doesn't make the other team dribble the ball, you're not going to worry about dribbling it either. We've that, seen this happen before in politics when the U.S. Senate, when it was controlled by the Democrats, got rid of the filibuster for appellate court nominations. The Republicans took over and said, now we're going to get rid of the filibuster for Supreme Court nominations. Mm -hmm. This is a terrible path to be going down. We should not go down this path. No secretary of state should be able to snap their fingers and take anybody off the ballot. But if the court says that's your responsibility, I've got to follow that. Certainly, tit for tat political retribution depresses voters' it's not belief tit in. For tat well, political what, retribution. what you're saying, what you're saying is, if it goes back and forth like it did over the filibuster, like it did, then it starts to devolve, and voters believe less and less in civic engagement. I, I took that to be your argument just a moment ago. Uh, sort of. Your, your basketball but, analogy turns both ways, though, because if a team uh, goes through an entire season, wins first place in the tournament, and goes to take their trophy, and then the fans of the losing team storm the stage and try to steal it. Why would they play the game in the first place? Well, that's exactly what the Democrats have done in Colorado and May. I was referring to January 6th. Uh, let's refer to facts that were sworn under the, into the record under, uh, under oath. President Trump knew there was heavy duty firepower in that mob. It was the mob he summoned. It was the mob okay, he instructed so where to fight. Is this in the record? It, was the it was in congressional record from Cassidy Hutchinson, who was a close aide to President Trump while all this happened. So uh, this was part of the J6 commission? It was also part of the Secret Service officers. Do you have any reason not to believe Secret Service officers? Uh, they Do told... I have any reason not to believe federal agents? You betcha. I had to kick federal agents out of Cole County last year because they were trying to illegally go in to our polling place. They weren't the Secret Service and they weren't President Trump's close aides. I, I want to go on with this, though, because this is part of the, the what we've seen under oath uh, submitted in the record. The crowd was heavily armed, and President Trump told the Secret Service to take down the metal detectors, those metal detectors that would have prevented an armed mob from slipping undetected closer to the Capitol on the day that the Congress was to certify the peaceful is, transfer isn't of power. This the so, same president if you don't call tried to get the National Guard out, and the Speaker of the House refused to do that, if you don't call that act aiding an insurrection, what do you call it? Well, it was it aiding an insurrection then when Nancy Pelosi refused to call out the National Guard when the president wanted to do that? This is ridiculous. You, so you don't hold Donald Trump to the same standard, standard you hold Nancy Pelosi to? I haven't held any of them to any standard. I don't believe it's my role as Secretary of State to make that decision. I believe that's why we have courts 
why we have due processes, why we have rules of evidence, and why we allow um, uh, cross-examination of witnesses, all of which really hasn't happened in this scenario. And that's why the Supreme Court needs to get involved and stop this. I think pr you could make the argument that presidents have an executive responsibility to guard against threats to the state, to the government. Uh, perhaps that's what is at stake in this insurrection argument. We'll see all of that. My last question to you before we go is because it sounds like you're pointing to the criminal conviction side. If there was a conviction in the Senate, which we know hadn't happened against Trump, uh, it may still happen against Biden. We'll see if the House can get the impeachment act going. If one day there is a conviction against President Trump, the question is going to come down in that court. Can a former president face criminal liability for acts they committed as an executive? I know you're not wearing a robe, a black robe right now, but if you were that judge, what say you? Can a former president face criminal convictions for actions he took as president? You know, there are differences of opinion on this. Um, I do not believe that the U.S. Constitution specifically precludes that. If you look at the impeachment cl clause, um, I believe that it still does allow uh, potentially for criminal charges against someone. And if the Supreme Court says that a president can face criminal charges, will you support that ruling? If the, I, I, what I've said from the beginning is I support the Supreme Court just saying what the Constitution says. I have no problem with what the Supreme Court has done. I need them to make that order so we stop what's going on in Maine and Colorado. A lot of our voters in Missouri are looking forward to this caucus coming up instead of a primary. You wanted to make that shift. Why? Well, actually, this was made by the, the state Senate. This was not part of my bill. Um, uh, several years ago, I, I started talking about the fact that it's silly to have both a caucus and a primary. We should have just one of them. But actually, it was the Senate that amended that into the bill. That was not part of my, uh, I did not push that forward. Are you going to caucus and where? Um, uh, you caucus in your county. So on March 2nd for me, that'll be Cole County. All right, Mr. Secretary, thanks for your time. Thank you.